The views and opinions shared on this show are from personal perspective, life experience of the individuals who share them for entertainment purposes only. This platform, its brand, and participants are not liable for the application and or result of any information shared on this channel. Viewers are advised to conduct their own research and make informed and prayerful decisions for their lives regarding the topics covered on this platform. Warning, this presentation is for adult audiences only. And thank you so much for joining us again on another episode of The Noble Vibe. I'm joined by my brother and my good, good friend, Mr. Lovely. And here we are here to have the conversation, train them how to treat you. Mm -hmm. I love this conversation. Me too. I like all of them. Really. That's because you aggressive. You aggressive. You like them. But I think it's kind of it's kind of hard to train a woman. <laughs> oh, oh, we going there <laughs> early in this conversation, huh? We just started. I don't care. It's it's hard. Why? I don't know because I I feel like a lot of situations, a lot of women have a one track mind when it comes to a relationship. It's what we want. Let's get it done. I think a lot of men choose very poorly because one thing I have found out is when you actually meet the right one, you don't have any problem. I agree. Saying yes, daddy. I agree, but you got to get there. You got to find out who that right You got to find is. that person. You got to find that person. So train them how to treat you. say women are hard to train. Mm -hmm. Well, men are simple. even harder. We simple. Though. Nope. Men are even harder to train because this is what I find myself doing. Now, if I were a man, how dumb would I have to put this? No, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. But... It's tricky because you have to kind of take a few steps back and say, okay, how, how are they seeing the world? Mm -hmm. Now, what can I do to show them what I want done without insulting them? Mm. That's hard, though. That's very hard. It, that's hard in life, period, because you can tell somebody they're doing something to offend you, and they take it personal. The average person okay. will take everything you say personal, mm -hmm. whether they say it or not. As a reflection on themselves. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. I can see that. I mean, you can taste that. Okay, if you cook the meal, somebody cook the meal, and you say, well, you, uh, or they can see, you ain't even got to do that. They see you grab the salt and put it in there. They might not say that, but self-conscious, they're like, dang, I know I seasoned that, uh, that chicken. You would think that? People do. I wouldn't think that. I don't think it because I I don't really care. But you got people that Or really, maybe a cook. Or maybe a person who I'm thinks saying. that could the cook. Who okay. cooked it. The person who cooked okay. it. Okay. If they cooked it and they see you putting seasoning in it, the first thing they're going to think is, oh, they think I ain't seasoned it right. good enough. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Or take something. Uh, Say you just wash some dishes and somebody grabbed the fork and they'd be like that. What what's the first thing that come to your mind? <laughs> oh, what you saying? I ain't clean the dishes. Right, not good enough. Or they, and they ain't even got to get nothing off of it. They just start. They, you just watch it. They looking at it like that. Okay, first of all, I think I would be, I would have to get used to it if it was somebody like I was living with, because nobody would be able to do that to me unless I was living with them. Right. Okay, I would have to get re used to that because my dad would do that not really because he was but, military but so think about was, it thank you thank you you have a, a party or something like a, a dinner at your house and you just put the silverware down and the person sitting next to you they pick it up and they start 
examining the spoon. <laughs> I would think they have OCD I, like me. I would so, say, well, damn, they must think I ain't clean. I wouldn't think that. Because I have OCD, so I would think maybe they have OCD like me or they're a germaphobe. <laughs> So that's that's mainly what I would think. This, mm-hmm. I'm sorry, we're getting a very important phone call while we're taping. So I'm a, he's gonna be texting, but we still gonna be talking. Right. But um, oh God, I I when it comes to training people, I, it's, it is very tricky, especially people you love and you mm-hmm. don't want to hurt their feelings. Mm-hmm. I remember um, I had this group I would always go out with. We would always um like have these little potlucks. Mm-hmm. And it never felt like it. It doesn't matter who was hosting; they mm-hmm. would always like take the food. Mm-hmm. Whatever was left, just take the food. Oh, man, that's most most black. Uh, yeah, that. But it's union. so annoying, though. I'm like, like and, uh, why would you do that? But the thing is, it's most of the people that don't even contribute or contribute the least amount. They want to take the most. But that's in life. Yeah, if but I, that if, is if, so annoying. But if you take a cake right now to your job. Sit it down. You gonna have somebody grab a couple, few pieces, and not think about everybody else. Yeah, that's true. That's life. That's true. You got some people that care about the world, and others they are the world. But this is the question: <laughs> We are the world. How do you train those types of people how to treat you? Well, here's the pot. Here's how we solve the potluck issue. Mm-hmm. We said, all right, so. Um, next potluck's gonna be at so and so's house. What's everybody bringing mm-hmm. to kind of get everybody first to bring something? Mm-hmm. No, see that that's that's the way to do it without hurting feelings. And that's that's I've I've even done that in my own family, you know. But we we I, my family wasn't like that group; they were horrible. Mm-hmm. But it, it's just trying to. Finesse, that's the right word. Mm-hmm. Trying to finesse a situation where you train somebody. Okay, so for instance, if a person, um, like when we first met, you talk with your big finger mm-hmm. in my face. Mm-hmm. And I kept telling you, stop. That's a point of, part point of getting my, at me. That's a part of getting my point across. I'm going to get my point. First of all, he's like three feet taller than me. So when he put his finger out, he's not even raising his hand or trying to put it in my face. But just his regular hand movement, it was like right here in my face. And I would have to constantly, constantly, constantly tell him, stop pointing your finger in my face when you talk to me. Mm -hmm. And eventually, you stop doing it. Yeah, I mean, but you got to let people know what you're going to allow. Right. So... If you got somebody coming, they always, and you don't like that. Right. Then what you do? Hey, hey. Hey, stop hey. touching me. And then eventually, because they ain't going to stop right then. But eventually what's going to happen? They're going to stop. Right. Like, I don't like being touched. Yep. Like, my mom, every time she talks to me, she's like, excuse me, I just said my real name on the show. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll bleep that out. But she calls my name and she like touches me and she touching my leg and I'm like, mm-hmm. Mom, stop! Like, why are you touching me? Okay, for instance, you're in a relationship. Let's talk about men and women. Let's mm-hmm. just go here. Mm-hmm. What are what? What is your apprehension about a woman teaching? Um, excuse me, a man having to teach a woman something. What? How do I feel about it? No, you said it was hard. It is. I want to know why you think it's hard. It, because like, it's hard. Basically, it's two two steps. It's hard because the man's stuck in his ways, a lot of the times, and a woman's stuck in her ways. So if you got if you got two people stuck in their ways, and they're trying to, hey, I don't like this, but hey, I don't like this either. It's going to eventually to cause, like, a different type of conflict that, that you... Some people can't get over. Some people are working out. Hmm. Let me ask you, do you think that's always the case, no matter how old the people are? Because do you think younger couples have as much adjusting as maybe older people when they get... Like, I'm old. Like, if... God, I pray for my husband right now because I know he has got to be one spectacular person because I am a lot. So, me being so old and me set in my ways, do you think younger couples 
have an easier time kind of doing no because adjusting. Like I told you earlier, this goes back to if social media ran. Listen, you could be sitting there, somebody strolling. You got a woman. Say you the dude and I'm the woman. She strolling through Facebook. She see all these couples on here buying Louis Vuitton bags. They going on all these trips. But how many butt whoopings have she taken to get that Louis Vuitton purse? Mm -hmm. or, you know what I'm saying? I may be a good guy, but I can't afford a Louis Vuitton purse. Mm -hmm. But what you see is he giving her a Louis Vuitton purse. He taking her to Jerusalem. He taking her to Jamaica. He taking her to PF Chains. He doing this. He doing that. But what about all the turmoil maybe going on in the house that you don't know about? You offered a good scenario. Let's start there. With a woman who has um, very uh, luxurious standards. Mm -hmm. And she's with a man who can't afford it. Mm -hmm. How does she communicate she wants, um, I guess, more? And how does he communicate you need to be content? I ain't going to say he need, she needs to be content. What I'm saying is hard work pays off. So if we want those things, then we work together and get it. So you just finessed her in one sentence. Right. Like, it ain't I, even a finesse. You can get it, but not now. It's That's basically what he's saying. But it's real life. Yeah, that is. It's real life. I right. feel like two heads are better than one. If I if if I got you and you just got to think everything on your own, then you got me on this side with somebody else and we working together, we're going to outthink you. Okay. Because you're going to get right. tired. You feel what I'm saying? If we was running a race and we had a mile to run and you running it by yourself and it's me and somebody else, you're going to fall out before we do. Mm -hmm. That's true. This, this is why I think being compatible in the first place, and I thought that was a good scenario to use because socially we see these mismatches. I think they're mismatches mm -hmm. because um, for a woman to have such high taste when she knows she's with a man who can't afford it, mm -hmm. Um, and for you to still want it, there's an issue, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with wanting what you don't, well, I need to be very careful how I say this. Right. I don't think there's anything wrong with aspiring to a standard of life. Okay. But I do think there is something wrong of finding fault with the man you chose who can't get you what you want. Or, or may have fallen, fallen off. Right. That could have before, but now right. he's in a different... Right, different state or different stage of life where circumstances won't allow him to do it. I think something's wrong with that. Mm -hmm. um, that's first of all. That's a one-track mind. Yeah, I, I, and, and just, I'm going to just go down the rabbit hole for a second. I don't understand that. I don't understand why so many of my brothers are being mismatched. Why are they allowing themselves to be mismatched, and why women? And I and the reason I'm I'm not understanding why men do it and why women do it because I I perfectly know exactly why women do it is because you get desperate and you settle. Mm. Okay, I don't know why brothers allow this mismatch to have this this thing uh, to happen. Some people that's what they want. It's a trophy wife. It's a dang everybody want her. I got her and everybody wants her. Is a trophy worth the headache? Depends on who you are. Because to me, I think it's real shallow not to have a value system in place. And yes, I am going to go to the dime, to the fat girl issue. Mm -hmm. Because, and and this is all a part of training people how to treat you. Because I think very, I, I think very highly of myself. And that's probably one of my biggest problems. <laughs> I think very highly of myself. But I think I know I'm a quality person. And it baffles me to see what society may identify as a dime who's not a quality person at all. Right. You know, understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and, they, and got a good brother and will mess over a good brother. Because... Okay, <laughs> we go back to the car situation. If if you take a car and you paint it all pretty, your favorite color, your favorite color, what's your favorite color? My favorite color is fuchsia pink. Okay, all you, kind you, of pink. you take a car and you 
painted fuchsia pink, your favorite color. Mm-hmm. It's your favorite type of car. It's a BMW. You love BMWs. And you painted the color you wanted. Now, I'm looking at it from here. I take a, a, a car over here. It's an off pink. But it ain't the pink that you like. But it's an okay pink. It'll do. It, it, it's a little Toyota. It's a Toyota? Mm-hmm. So we went from one foreign car to the next. But, Everybody that knows me knows I love American cars. No, no, no. It ain't even about the car. But the average person will pick the BMW. Mm-hmm. Why? Because of the standard or what it's supposed to be. Supposed to represent. Okay, I got you. That it's the color that they like. Mm-hmm. It's got all the bells and whistles. They think because mm-hmm. it's a BMW. Mm-hmm. They think right, but when you walk up to it, okay, they say, "Hey, you stand back here. You got to choose one of these cars. You pick the BMW. You go up to the BMW. You open it up. It ain't got no seats inside. It, <laughs> that's it ain't got that's no radio. exactly what is going on. It ain't got no steering wheel. Mm-hmm. It's got stains and dog piss all over the inside." Mm-hmm. Then you got the Toyota over here, the one you passed up on. It got a navigation system in the inside. Mm-hmm. They got uh, potentials. Bucket seats that grip your butt. <laughs> Potential. So now that you walked up I on. I like what you said. Now that you walked up on both of them, mm-hmm. you was too late to say, oh, well, can I get that one? Because that's what you chose. That's what you chose. That's and, right. And that's going in the wind. Mm-hmm. That's why they, that, with the little game show, think about the game show. They give you four doors. You choose one of the doors. Mm-hmm. But they also got a cash prize right here. You can take this $5,000 right here. Or you can take what's behind the door, one, two, or three. Mm-hmm. This don't look that big. Mm-hmm. $5,000, I take that. But the doors could be endless. Yeah. Yeah. Average person say, well, shoot, bought the 5000 I'm going to take this. That's the average person to say it? Of course. Because everybody, th- everybody think bigger is better. Oh. Right or wrong? I don't think that. The average person. You're okay, okay, okay. Shoe, the average, average person, person, yeah, okay, yeah. The average person think bigger is better. Right. So, not even with jobs. Okay, they say, well, a doctor, you, make, uh, you might make a million dollars a year. But look at all the work you're doing. Yeah, yeah, and the work you got to put into that. Right. Right. So, you know what I'm saying? It's it's all about what you want or whoever it is. Like, I can go out to the grocery store and buy me some meat. Or I can go sit in a tree stand and shoot a deer. Is That's the good. headache worth it? That's good. The headache wouldn't be worth it for me to sit in the tree stand. Why? Because I wouldn't want to do that. Oh, that's because you know who you are and you don't right. want to do that. Oh, okay. But, but the other person, yeah. it might be... Worth Relaxing it. and fun to them. Okay. I love fishing. I'd rather go fishing than go buy a fish. I don't want to do none of that. I don't right. like outside. Right. So you'd rather go buy your fish. I would rather have someone else buy it, cook it, everything. Well. I mean, I give you the money to go buy it. I don't want to, you know. Mm-hmm. I, I, see, I know me. I know me. I've known me for a long time. And this is why I work so hard. Because I know where I want to go in life. And I, wa- I don't want to just take myself. I want to take everybody around me. Mm-hmm. This is this is why I hustle like I do. And So you know what headaches are worth it and what's not. Yeah. That goes back to what you first said. Yeah, but see, I like that scenario. And I'm going to go back to that. I'm abandoning what I was saying. But I'm going to go back to what you were saying. When you was like... It's potential, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. I tell my brother this all the time. I tell both of them this. You passed over that girl over there because you say she was plain. Mm-hmm. And you went after this one over here mm-hmm. who was a hoe mm-hmm. and who married the nigga who was mutting out. Mm-hmm. But that's what you wanted. When you passed over plain Jane, but what you forget, what you forgot to fail to realize about plain Jane is you could take her, boo her up, marry her up. If you don't like her glasses, go get her some contacts. If you don't like her hair, go get her hair done. Go take her shopping and show her what you like to put her on. You know what I'm saying? But see, if she is she too fat, take her to the gym. But see, look at but you gotta look at it. It looked like too much work from the outside. You hear what I'm saying? 
it looked like too much work for now. But I like your level of honesty, what you said. you rather go buy your meat right. than sit in the stand and wait for a and deal. Wait for a deal. What if you don't walk by? I wasted a whole day, to me. But to somebody else... They... Are we talking about a deer or are we talking about people? Period. It all coincides. Because I'm conf- I got confused just then. How? My, 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 I'm saying you said. What I, you mean how? I told you. I, listen, I, I was said, being vulnerable and honest to say I got confused. I said I'd rather buy my meat. To me, if the deer didn't come by, if I was standing in the tree, that was a waste of my day. So if you're saying that in a scenario I just gave, you would have pursued the dime too and left Plain Jane alone. The average person, yes, because it looks like too much work. Uh. If you if you meet this girl and she don't got none of the qualities that you're looking for, right? It looked like too much work. But if I see this car over here to go back to the car, it look like all I got to do is add a couple more things and I'm good until you walk up on it. Okay. It'll be more work to fix the whole inside of that car to change the color on that car. To me, okay, let me let me clarify. The advice that I gave was not a fixer-upper. Maybe on the outside. But the girl is. was solid on the inside. It's still a fixer-upper. Who, who's perfect? Nobody's perfect. So everybody's a fixer-upper. Everybody, they don't come uh, that this person is the perfect thing. for some, Something somebody do going to bother you. Or it might be something they do that you they could change. That is true. So that's nothing compared to you having to fix everything on somebody. That's why the Toyota in that situation would be better than the BMW because you got to fix the whole inside of the BMW. And once you fix it, you got to get the smell out of it and all the other stuff. All you do is just, <laughs> get the smell out of it. Because remember I said mm, the dog piss. I know. Get the smell out of it after it's fixed. Only here... If I don't like the color, I can change the color. It ain't gonna take nothing. And this is this is all I was saying about the plain Jane. Right. That's that's go back to what you said. Oh, cause we oh we just got our analogies crisscrossed. That wasn't right. Word. Okay. I was going back to exactly the same thing okay. you were saying. You were saying if you don't like the hair, fix it. Right. If you don't like the way, just little fix minor it. stuff, just fix but it. But the thing is, within doing that stuff, y'all can do it together. Yeah. She got to fix her inside on her own. It's nothing you can do. On oh, that's good. That is good, sir. Mm-hmm. She got to fix her inside on her own. Mm-hmm. He got to fix her his inside on his own. Mm-hmm. Can't do that with nobody. Mm-mm. Hmm. This is what your single season is for. Your single season is to get to know you, to become the best version of yourself you could possibly be. Mm-hmm. How can I expect to want to marry a man with good credit if my credit is trash? Right. right. How could I expect to marry somebody or be booed up with somebody that has this and has that, is that, is this, and I am not these things? That's the reality check I got. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. in in my waiting, in my trying to process some things, okay, if you want all this, then you need to first be all of these things. hmm before you require somebody else to be it. I think training people how to treat you has a lot to do with, first, how you treat yourself. Mm-hmm. If you don't know how to treat you, how you expect me to... If if I see you dogging you, mm-hmm. what do you think I'm going to do? That's good right now. If you don't value you... But you can't blame me for it either. No. You, you really can't get mad at me for continuing what you started. And you can't want something from somebody they don't want for themselves. Right. Right. If I start off with a girl and I start off by buying her everything she want and then I say, well, dang, I ain't got it. And then she was like, well, I want it. I created that monster myself. Listen, my mama always say this. Don't start no relationship off doing something you ain't going to keep doing. Mm-hmm. So if you know you don't like washing dishes, don't start off washing dishes. If you know you ain't gonna cook, don't start cooking don't start every day. Off cooking every day. Just cook, you know, the once a week, once a yeah. month, whatever you do. Mm-hmm. Don't spoil that man just because you goo goo gaga in love, and then he he got these expectations of coming in work to hot, uh, coming home to a hot meal every day, mm-hmm. and a month down the road, two three months down the road, you done fell off, and now talking about you done changed. No, you ain't changed. I'm just getting to know who you really are. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. 
So to me, training people how to treat you has a lot to do with your you, standard of care for you. You first. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I like that. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm so truthful to myself, first of all. Well, you got to be. If you and it hurt, to too. You, yeah, it hurt. It hurt because you see the flaws in you before anybody else. Mm -hmm. That's just like you ain't take no bath. You smell you first. Mm -hmm. Nowhere in hell that you ain't smell you before somebody now else. No, that's, that's country. What? You, the way you said that, you smell you first. You do. <laughs> that's the truth. so country, but it's true. It's the truth. It's true. You you know you funky for it. So <laughs> you don't think you need to take a bath? Then why somebody else go mm -hmm. there? Mm -hmm. Just don't get around no honest people. Oh, I, I, I want to be around honest people. No, I'm saying if you don't yeah, want to take a bath, yeah. just don't be around. I love being around honest people. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you what offends me is when people lie to me. Mm -hmm. Like if I say how did I do, and this great this, you did great yeah you know you ain't do good yeah like I be looking at um sometimes when I go and I sing and I minister I ask like my closest friends all the time like how did I do and they be like oh you did real good and I just be looking at them sometimes like but hold on you can't say that because. You can't say that because I got a homeboy that sings, and he sings professional. His name is Otazio Town. Why you keep calling these people name on the show? I don't know. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> he's saying, but I can hear him saying something, and it sounds good to me mm -hmm. because I am not you, and I'm not trained to do see what you see. Right, you don't hear. But from to him, his... he, I'm, I'm saying he'll be old. Now I was off pitch and all this. I don't first know about pitch and all that other stuff. So by me not knowing that and me getting my, uh, me saying, hey, it sounds good to me. Mm, that's a good point you're making. So when you're when you're asking for these observations, we should be appropriate in who we're asking. Right. So if I'm saying how I did, I should be asking other musicians how right, I did. Right, right. Mm, they can say, oh, well, you was a little that's pitching. That's good. Uh, it was flat. Yeah. These are all terms that I heard, but I don't know it. Not you don't know what it me. is. Right. So if, if. <laughs> Cause you good at doing this. Cause sometimes I like dressing like a Haitian. Mm -hmm. Like um, I'll just put something on and roll out the door. And working with a bunch of men, they have no problem telling you when you did not hit the mark. <laughs> <laughs> and they would do this to me all the time. You remember that time I had on like some real bright orange and some mm -hmm. army leggings, and the boy, <laughs> the boy <laughs> started raking on me so bad. Yeah, I remember that. Listen, but I just. I have to be in a place where people tell me the truth. Mm -hmm. That that's my first standard of care because that's the only time I can um, it, change. If if you grow. don't if you don't tell me the truth, you don't care about me. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. you, you really don't. That hurts sometimes though. Hearing the truth, you good with this. Mm -hmm. You real good with this. I have been chastised by this man plenty of times. I'm gonna deliver. He's very nasty. No, he's not. <laughs> he's very rude. I'm going to deliver it. Um, but um, I had a group of brothers on this job. I would say you, maybe about two others. Mm -hmm. You know, my two, my t other two. Mm -hmm. But um, I had no problem receiving criticism and critique from these brothers. Mm -hmm. And um, they'd be like, yo, you tripping. You just, and that was, that was the main thing they said all the time. Mm -hmm. You tripping. But guys, do that necessarily mean you tripping when they saying that? Or maybe like, you, maybe you're you're thinking you're overthinking it. Yeah. Or I I think sometimes you have, listen with a lot of men. It's simple. What they say is what they mean. Like we said earlier. Mm -hmm. Not I said something, but I meant something totally different. Like if I say if you say hey how you doing, I say I'm straight. Don't look at that and say, well, dang, what's wrong? Because he just straight. I would do that. That means I'm okay. I'm good. I would overthink. I overthink. Then when you overthink and then you come to me with it, what it's going to do is going to create another problem because why? I just told you what was, what was up with me. Creative people are creative mentally, okay? Mm -hmm. And we have a mental space that is different from... On others, and this is true. I have to own this. It's called um, what the creator's mind or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what you call it, but most people who have a creative thought press, the creative thought process are kind of 
left a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know, just a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know. But it's good to have that synergy where you have people who are solid, mm -hmm. like a rock. Mm -hmm. Who gonna tell you the truth? Who gonna keep you steady? This is why I have the circle of people around me that I do. None of them think like I think, but at the same time, they all know how to treat me. But the thing is, if you think about it, it's easier to be around people that won't to tell you the truth. It's it is. Easy. It is. It's easier. It's less conflict. It's less arguments. That I, somebody told me uh, one day. If you were a girl and she ain't arguing with you, she she don't, she don't care, care no more. I don't know, ladies. Is that true? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know neither. Because I don't argue. I don't come from an argue. My parents didn't argue. There was some good ones. They would disagree, but I remember my daddy saying, it takes a strong man to be married to your mom. Mm. I think... You feel the way you feel. I feel the way I feel. If we don't, if we don't see eye to eye right now, let's 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 burn on it, and we'll come back together in a minute to see where we at. But who often do that? Though? If I, if you got people in there in their mad space, they stand in their mad space, or it take them time for them to cool off. You ain't, if you go out there trying to tell them something, they don't want to hear that. That is true. I'm I'm like if I'm mad I don't want to hear you tell me let's do all that's going out the window. I'm okay. Really? Yeah. That's so sad. It is, but but that's how you process. It's the truth. So in somebody getting to know them, you're training them. When I'm upset, leave right. me alone. And your daughter, who is very much so like you, you've already said that, will have to do the same thing. Right. Whoever she ends up with will have to know when she is upset to leave her alone. Because you make the situation nothing but worse. Mm -hmm. If you don't just leave me alone and let me get over it, let me process what's going on, then we creating a whole nother problem. Mm -hmm. Then I feel like it's no respect because you don't respect what I just asked you. I asked you to leave me alone. Not in a way to get there or fight it, mm -hmm. but leave me alone. Let me chill. Let me stay to myself. Let me get through this. And then we can talk later on. So in your experience, most men will communicate that? No. No? Really? No. You got a lot of people that to get their point across. So you have to learn the person to see what right, they... Right, right. Okay. It's, it's all... Everybody different. I'm like that. The next man, he might want to argue. Okay. So in learning, if you if you take the time in learning, they're training you. Mm -hmm. So as you're training you, I don't see... Mm -mm, wait, hold on. I just heard what you said. I, I ran over it real quick, but let me come back to it. You say some men like to argue. Mm -hmm. So you got an arguing woman and an arguing man... That's the Argon home. And then what's going to happen? Nothing. Argon churn. Yeah. Eventually. Mm hmm No. No. I don't, um, I, I like, like, synergy in my home. I like a quiet space. I like, let's just be, we don't always have to communicate with words. Okay. Why are you laughing at me? <laughs> Let's just be. Oh man, that's just me. Like in my space, I don't like drama. I don't like confusion. Now I don't. I'm not scared of it. Yeah. Like if something have to be handled, because I'm such an aggressive person, and I could be considered like a boss kind of mm -hmm. nature. When I'm home and in my space and in my element around my people, I don't like. I just like to be. I like to laugh. I love comedy and I like to chill. That's it. Well, let me tell you what I was told. A long time ago, and it works for me. Like I told you earlier, men are thinkers. So, if I got 24 hours in a day, I shouldn't be talking all 24. Some of the hours of the day, I should be sitting back just thinking. Mm -hmm. So, sometimes I sit by myself, and well, all the time, I sit by myself and I process what's going on or some things that I may have to do that, that day or how I'm going to handle it or how I'm going to take the first step to doing something different. Mm -hmm. But it takes thought process. Even when I'm at work, I make, I make the kids meditate. Mm -hmm. We'll sit in the open 
and I say I turn all the TVs off, nobody talking, put your head down and just sit there and think. Mm -hmm. Or if not, just sit there quiet. Because what I do know is the mind's always going. Mm -hmm. And if you shut it down, it's still mm -hmm. going to have things going through it. So you got to give a direction. Right. Did y'all just hear that? The mind is always going. You have to give it direction. My God. So I got to treat my mind. I got to train my mind how to treat me. Mm -hmm. So we're not just going to be going idly. Mm -hmm. We're going to have purpose to our thoughts. Mm -hmm. We're going to give our thoughts direction and purpose and, mm -hmm. and destiny. Because, wow. see, you got to think about it. Say you you might be in the house by yourself, but you got the TV on. You got the computer. You got the phone. You got this. You got that. All that is a distraction. Remove all that. Made for 30 minutes, 20 minutes, and just sit there. And I promise you, I promise you, you do it after a while, you'll see stuff a lot different. But that's that's in training. That's in knowing yourself, too, though. Mm -hmm. But everybody's not like that. They're not. To me. But you got to start somewhere. Now, when I'm in work mode, and sometimes I, you know, because I work a lot from my home now. Mm -hmm. I have my phone going, I had an iPad on, the laptop, the computer, and the TV. And don't give yourself time to think. No, because I'm processing multiple things and at you one don't time. Give yourself time to think. Well, this is this is the thing though. I've had my meditation in the beginning. When I get up in the morning, I I call it prayer. I have my prayer time where I can come to my center and then I'm gonna tell you this, a portion of it is meditation. It is not prayer. Mm -hmm. because I am coming into my center at that point. Mm -hmm. I'm lining up, itemizing in my head everything that I have to do. Mm -hmm. And when I get out of that chair, boom, I'm gone. And that's why I can process so fast and so rapidly. So let me ask you a question. All right. Practice is practice, right? Mm -hmm. But it's a difference in practicing basketball and in being in the game. That's That's true. So if all I'm doing is meditating and keeping my signs I mean doing my time to myself before I get started I'm still not in the game you get what I'm saying you ain't gave yourself a chance to break down from that hectic day you're talking you just, about coming out of it I'm saying like in the middle in the middle close to the end uh, three quarters to the uh, beginning you're doing everything in the beginning. Well, I'm praying the whole time. Yeah, but you're still not taking no time to yourself due to the hustle and bustle of the day. I don't understand what he's saying. You're not taking no time for yourself doing the hustle and bustle I of the day. I do take time. In the morning before everything get going. Okay, listen. And this, this, is, this is an interesting fact because I just had a long conversation with one of my good friends mm -hmm. yesterday. And he was saying, man, I haven't had a break from work. Like in six weeks, and I'm just at a place where I'm just mentally breaking down. Mm -hmm. And I was like, hey, you know, go outside, go sit in the bathroom in the stall if you have to. Through the middle of the day. And just take a minute. That's what I'm trying to tell oh, you. Oh, of course, I do that. Okay. But if, you say you get all that done in the morning. Oh, time. I started in the morning. Uh, let me, if I said that, I don't remember, but let me correct it. I, that's not the only time that I have, but in the morning. Before I get started, yes. But during the day, because sometimes this, it gets a bit overwhelming. Especially when I'm I'm trying to text somebody, somebody's trying to talk to me, and then somebody's IMing me, and then, you know, I got an email came in, and then I'm working on editing this video and doing that, and it's just a lot. And when it gets to where I'm over, because even women get overwhelmed. I know we can process a lot, but I have to... Hold on. Let me just walk away for a second. Right. I yeah. agree with you. That's what you got to do. Yeah. Yeah. And this is this is even in relationships as well. Because it, it's interesting that we're we're having this conversation about training people how to treat you because I I had a, a very close friend. I had to actually just pump the brakes on our relationship. Mm -hmm. We've been friends for over 20 years. Mm -hmm. And she offended me in the worst way. Mm -hmm. Because... A friend is when I'm exposed, and you know I'm exposed in the area. You don't uncover, you don't uncover me. Mm -hmm. 
You know what you I'm saying? Especially in the street. You don't finish it off. That's right. Yeah. And what actually happened was we were all in a vulnerable space. We had just lost a friend mm -hmm. and a very close friend. And this person was exceptionally upset and knew I was vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Got me in a place where I had no other recourses but was depending completely on them. Mm -hmm. And walked off and abandoned them so I had nothing and nobody. Mm -hmm. To the point, I am sitting in my car, boo, crying like, I don't know how I'm going to get home. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. And my other friend was like, we're not doing that. What's your cash app? Let me send it to you right now. Mm -hmm. We're not doing that. So, in training her how to treat me, and I haven't had this conversation with her yet, I pumped the brakes. Mm -hmm. we're, we're not going any further in this relationship mm -hmm. until we get this clear. Mm hmm and then what was so crazy is I pumped the brakes. They didn't. It took them a while to even notice the brakes was on pause. They were still walking and talking and going on. And I'm way back here like. And that is to me when they finally noticed like something's different. Mm -hmm. I said, we need to have a conversation. Because there was an offense. And I need to tell you what the offense was so you get it. So. Moving forward, we don't have this problem in the future. Mm -hmm. But I will tell you, there are some offenses that, regardless of how they are repaired, the relationship will never be the same again. Well, I, I can go for that. I got a couple friends the same way. It's uh, it's no love loss. It's no right bad blood. But it just won't be what it was. Because I know that... In the relationship, I put my best foot forward. And for a while, I felt like they did too. But at the end of the day, it was a self-gain. Mm. And when you see that, you got two options. You let them continue or you counsel them. Mm -hmm. So I counseled it. We still talk to this day, but it ain't like it was. So let me ask you, was the nature of the offense so so drastic that you were left, you had a choice whether cancellation was reasonable? It's not cancellation where I don't talk to them. It's cancellation as how far the relationship. Mm, okay. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah, like, I got We you. still talk, but it's it's no, it's no what it was. Right. It never it will. Yeah. I perfectly get that. And that, and that sometimes... Tra and training people how to treat you, you have to be willing to pay those types of prices. It's going to happen. Everybody yeah, start with you, won't finish with you. Regardless if you're a regular person or you're a celebrity. Everybody you start with won't finish with you. I got a, I got a, uh, a young dude that sings. I'm talking about make a song sound like he in the studio. He be sitting in my car. Mm. And I told him, he started out with this group of people. I said, listen, I want you to look around and look at everybody that's with you. Mm -hmm. A year from now, two years from now, everybody won't be here. <laughs> you sound like Joe Club. <laughs> it's true. And me That's and him true. had a conversation the other day. Everybody's not there. Mm -hmm. Everybody's not there. So at the end of the day, like, it's all about what you accept. Some people like that, yes, man, that, uh, yes, sir, boss. But he know, like, even with me, I'm so straight up with him. If he messing up, I'm going to tell him, hey, he had a, uh, he had a, a, um, a studio session with Jazzy Faye, mm. if you know who that is. He had a studio session with Jazzy Faye. They, they created a whole song, but he was so zoned out with mm. the whole situation. When he came back to Jacksonville, I said, what, what, what was you doing? He was like, I don't know. I just couldn't get it together. I said, that's why you're supposed to prepare yourself before you get in that situation. Mm -hmm. You don't wait till you get to the game to practice. Mm -hmm. You don't wait till you get the game. You was off your game. Now, you came back home, and you can make 10,000 songs. But when you were in the situation where you could have had your light shine on, he had to write a song for you. No. You're better than that. You can take his song. It sound good. It sound real good. The song that he made for you, but that ain't you. You do your own work. Okay, so this 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 brings a question. What 
What was different in that environment that caused him to lose his focus? One, he felt like he was in a room with a lot of people that were more experienced. Mm. So he felt like, I can't burn my own candle, but that's the time for you to shine. Listen, my pastor teaches us a lot to, you know what, um, when you're exposed to new rooms, mm -hmm. keep your mouth shut. Mm -hmm. Just observe what's going mm -hmm. on so you don't blow it. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I perfectly understand what you're saying. You were invited into the room because you're different. You have something special. So I think with being humble in the room, there is a level of your identity you have to take into the room. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You can't shrink back. And this is a part of, number one, when we talked about um, in our first Hunt and Crown episode, being mm -hmm. unapologetically mm -hmm. who we are. Mm -hmm. You have to take that person everywhere you go. Mm -hmm. You know, so you don't shrink in those in those moments. Now that was a hard learning experience from mm -hmm. him, but I bet you won't have to teach him that lesson you again. You won't because with him, I could be in the studio with him. I could sit there, and we could be somewhere, and it's a confidence that he has mm -hmm. that nobody's better than me. And he, I know, and other people know, it's people that sing better than him. Mm -hmm. But some of the content that he put together, I'd be like, whoa. Right. You, you just turned 18 years old. Nobody can do it like he can do it. Right. I mm -hmm. said, you just turned 18 years old. Mm -hmm. And you're talking about stuff that you haven't experienced or you shouldn't know about or you should be learning about. It's like, you can hold your own. Yeah. Don't ever let nobody tell you that you can't. Right. Don't ever let nobody put you in a room that you, you know what I'm saying, all that confidence that you had, you, had the, you didn't have the confidence when they told you to go write something. But when he put something in your face, you took on the confidence of his song, not mm -hmm. yours. So you downplayed your craft and upplayed his. Oh my God, that's good. And that's a that's another part of training, right? Because sometimes we can forfeit who we are to become chameleons for somebody else. Isn't that um an old saying that says? Um, you know by the company you keep and either one or two things happening. Either you can you are influencing them or they're influencing you. Mm -hmm. It just, it, you know, if you know who you are, the chances of that happening, um, this is why I don't, pe peer pressure was never a problem for me. Because mm -hmm. I always knew who I was. So it didn't really matter what everybody else was doing. I'm not mm -hmm. doing that. That's dumb. Mm -hmm. And I would say so. Mm -hmm. Like, that's real stupid. Mm -hmm. Whatever, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, but I think knowing who you are, mm -hmm. um, also trains people what to bring into your space and what not to bring into your space. Mm -hmm. Cause yeah. you, even when I was working with y'all, I used to tell them, don't talk about your crime in here, baby. Cause if mm -hmm. I overhear something, I'm going to snitch. Mm -hmm. So they knew when they came in there, don't. Don't, don't, don't expose it. Don't, don't. Cause I'm not a good liar, baby. I don't. I'm right. a good criminal. I'm horrible. Right. So the, the the moral of that whole thing I was just telling you, if you know who you are, mm -hmm. don't don't second guess when you're in front of whoever. I could have Barack Obama right here. Mm -hmm. I'm still not going to not be me. Be who I am. That's right. I'm still, I got a Southern twang. I know it. I'm not going to sit here and try to talk like this, man. I'm going to be me. Mm -hmm. He going to either like me for me or he's not. You know what? That is so funny that you said that. Cause I got my doctor when I was at when I was um twenty eight years old. Mm -hmm. I wanted to get them when I was twenty four, but it wasn't happening. I had dropped out of school and I had to get back in. But mm -hmm. um after I got that degree conferred, I walked around, I'm Dr. McNair, I'm I'm this, I'm that. And then suddenly, like a few months it hit me. Yo, that is not your name. That is not your name. People can't even relate to you what you having those airs about you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Be who you are. Mm -hmm. Be authentically who you are. And that, that doesn't change. Exposure, uh, influence, affluence. None of that changes who you are. Mm -hmm. And that, like you say, even my Southern twang, I had to embrace that. 
But the thing is, people get in situations. I mean, situations, and they wanted the change. When I became a supervisor in my job, I wasn't no different than when I was uh, a regular staff. I'm not no different. I just got a title. I got a title, but it ain't changed me. I'm still me. I'm gonna always be me. You remember what you told me? You told them people. What? You was not kissing nobody. Yeah, and I'm still not. I was like, you did not say that. He was like, yes, I did. In my interview. In the interview. I was like, you did not say that. He was like, I did. Why not? He's like, I'm not kissing nobody, but I was Why like, not? oh because my God. Because the thing about it is, if it's for me, I'm going to get it. Mm-hmm. There's nothing you can do to hold me back if it's my time. Yeah, that is the truth. That's how you feel about it. That's how I feel. And that's with everything. I and I and I will tell you all the time. I say you so, um, you so arrogant. What would I say? Yeah, you you cocky or something? I would tell you all that. But he was like, "No, I'm not arrogant. I just know who I am. Period. Point blank. I know who I am. You know. Mm-hmm. And then t- I thought, I, le- I honestly thought he was an arrogant person. But watching him a while, I said. Mm. Okay, maybe he just thinks very highly of himself. He's not arrogant. But I don't think I'm better than people. That's right. Okay. I, I would help anybody. I'd rather help anybody before anything else. Yes, that is true. I know that but about you. I just feel like I'm the greatest to do what I do. Come on. And you don't care who it is. Mm. You don't let anybody compromise who you know yourself to be, period, Mm -hmm. point Mm -hmm. blank. Mm -hmm. You just don't do it. Training people how to treat you is um, tricky. Mm -hmm. Um, You have to be an adult about the situation. You have to be very forgiving. Because sometimes we be trying to train people to do stuff that's not appropriate, necessary, or even true. Or for you. Or for, that's so good. Mm-hmm. Or for you. Mm-hmm. Um, I think knowing where to put those pearls as well. Mm-hmm. Because I'm not supposed to invest time into training somebody that I don't plan on being around. Mm-hmm. You can do what you want to do. I really don't care. I'm just, hey, bye, goodbye, and I'm going to keep it moving, period. Mm-hmm. I remember my grandmother died. And literally, there was a family member there that I ran from. Mm -hmm. Like, I didn't literally, like, obviously run Mm -hmm. from in the cemetery. But you know how you keep moving around people because you see them coming? Mm -hmm. Like, I kept doing this. And when they caught up to me, he was like, hey. And I was like, hi. And I just, you know, I just kept going. Because I'm not fixed to waste my time and my energy. Number one, I'm somebody I don't like. Mm -hmm. And let's just be honest. Sometimes you just don't like people. That I don't think that is not God like. I think you, to an extent we do love everybody, mm-hmm. but there are people that we just don't like. Period. Mm-hmm. I'm like that. I swear to you, I'm like it's just some people I can't connect with their soul. So that's why I told you I'm I'm quiet when I first meet people because I I know from then from from. Me listening to their conversation or seeing people interact with others, whether I want to be bothered or not. Mm-hmm. If I don't want to be bothered, like a lot of people have a problem with going in a room, not talking to people, but I'll walk right in and not say nothing. Yeah. It took me a while to notice that. Because I, I never noticed it. I would rather me not waste that time mm-hmm. than to, you know what I'm saying, like, oh man. That no time wasted. If I ain't giving no energy, there's no time wasted. Yeah, you said something very powerful in our first show that our words are a part of us, mm-hmm. and you don't waste giving a part of yourself to people who are not worthy to receive those things. Right, right, mm-hmm. right. You don't want everybody saying, "Oh, um, make me all over the world," but you don't deal with. Mm-hmm. I want. Everybody need to leave their own legacy. I tell people all the time, we are our own commercial. Mm. We are our own commercial. So whether you got a good commercial or you got a, a cheesy commercial, it's on you. Mm-hmm. It's on you. I'm 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 the leader of my own group. I always will be. Sound like Bernie Mac. I walk alone. Right. Right. You don't walk alone. I have to. 
You have a whole village who walks with you. Right, but you still got to walk alone sometimes. That is true. To an extent. I still got to check. If if I got a village with me it, and it's my job to protect, I still got to make sure everything is straight before they come. Okay, that's speaking from the perspective of a man as a provider, right. as a protector. Not even, not even as in a relationship, as period. If I got people following me, yeah, like make, your mother, your, right. I your make, daughter, you. I got even friends. I got to make sure if I'm protecting, if I'm the protection, if I'm this, I'm that. I got to make sure everything. Like me and my friends used to go to the club. I'm the only one who drink. But guess what? My head is on a swivel, and I'm watching everything around. I know they're intoxicated. I know they're getting intoxicated. I know they will be intoxicated. So it's my job. I took it on myself mm. as to make sure they get home like they came. Mm -hmm. So if it goes to, okay, we driving. I'm driving. Okay, I, and it's so crazy. I remember we was like 18 years old. So me and two of my friends, we go to the club. We done hung out all night. They drunk. One of them in the back seat, the other one. In the passenger seat. I'm driving my friend car. I ain't had no car. We driving. I'm driving, driving, driving. We get around 20th Street Expressway. And the car just started jerking. Like, mm. I'm like, oh. Now everybody's asleep. Nobody still is going on but me. So I, I somehow keep control of the steering wheel. I keep from hitting the guardrail. And I get us home. Mm. Nobody knew what happened until I told them the next day. That was my part of protection. I was supposed to do what I did because if one of them would have drove, they probably have been impaired. You know what I like about what you say is because in relationships you you are trained so they could trust you even when at their most vulnerable moment. Mm -hmm. That and see this is this is my whole thing when you train people train them to the point that they loyal to you even behind your back